Hi guys, Dane here, and today I am going to be doing two tags in one. So this is a combination of uh, the BookTube Top 10 tag, which was created by Old Blues Chapter and Verse, and I'll link to the info for that below. Basically, he's creating like an overall top 10 books from across BookTube. So I'm going to do that, and then the other one is called the Popcorn First Lines tag, I think. And I was tagged to do this by Graham Quigley. I'm not sure who created it, but I feel like it might have been Josh from Literary Gladiators. Just because it usually is, I don't, I don't know. So, so I've done this a bit strangely because basically I don't really have a top 10 list overall. I have what I usually say is my favourite book, so that would be no surprise. But I, uh, I wanted to make sure that my favourite authors were all represented as well. So in many cases I've just taken my favourite book by that author. We'll go through and see what we've got here. So starting at number 10, we have The Valley of Fear, a Sherlock Holmes story by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. So my favourite used to be uh, The Sign of the Four, but then I reread it recently and it basically I hadn't noticed all the racism in it the first time. Or I had, but it was years ago, you know? Because The Sign of the Four was basically the first Sherlock Holmes book that I read at uni, which is why I always used to pick that as my favourite. But I think overall The Valley of Fear is probably my, my favourite short story, uh, favourite Sherlock Holmes novel. So, as per the popcorn tag, I guess I've got to read you the opening chapter or, or so of it. I don't know, here we go. I'll, I'll read until I feel like it's a good place to start. Part 1, The Tragedy of Burlstone. Chapter 1, The Warning. I'm inclined to think, said I. I should do so, Sherlock Holmes remarked impatiently. I believe that I am one of the most long-suffering of mortals, but I admit that I was annoyed at the sardonic interruption. Really, Holmes, said I severely, you are a little trying at times. He was too much absorbed with his own thoughts to give any immediate answer to my remonstrance. He leaned upon his hand with his untasted breakfast before him, and he stared at the slip of paper which he had just drawn from its envelope. Then he took the envelope itself, held it up to the light, and very carefully studied both the exterior and the flap. There we go. So, number nine, we have Roald Dahl, and my favourite Roald Dahl book is George's Marvelous Medicine. And I actually once made a Marvelous Medicine of my own when I was a kid, and then when you sprayed it with deodorant, flames came off. That's not supposed to happen, though. All right, warning to readers. Do not try to make George's Marvelous Medicine yourselves at home. It could be dangerous. I guess I didn't read that bit. <laughs> I'm going shopping in the village, George's mother said to George on Saturday morning. So be a good boy and don't get up to mischief. This was a silly thing to say to a small boy at any time. It immediately made him wonder what sort of mischief he might get up to. And don't forget to give Grandma her medicine at 11 o'clock, the mother said. Then out she went, closing the back door behind her. Grandma, who was dozing in her chair by the window, opened one wicked little eye and said, Now you heard what your mother said, George. Don't forget my medicine. No, Grandma, George said. And just try to behave yourself for once while she's away. Yes, Grandma, George said. There we go. Also, when I've picked a book that's representative of a series, like the Arthur Conan Doyle book, for example, I'm not sure whether that counts. I'd preferably vote for the series rather than just the book, but I'm not sure how that works in uh, the rules of this tag. So we'll, we'll go for both. And the same applies here for number eight. So either just the Harry Potter series in general or Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, which is my favorite one for some reason. I, I don't know why. I always preferred the first sort of three or four books than the latter ones for some reason. Harry Potter was a highly unusual boy in many ways. For one thing, he hated the summer holidays more than any other time of year. For another, he really wanted to do his homework, but was forced to do it in secret in the dead of night. And he also happened to be a wizard. It was nearly midnight, and he was lying on his front in bed, the blankets drawn right over his head like a tent, a torch in one hand, and a large leather-bound book, A History of Magic by Batilda Bagshot, propped open against the pillow. Harry moved the tip of his eagle feather quill down the page, frowning as he looked for something that would help him write his essay, which burning in the 14th century was completely pointless. Discuss. We've all been there, Harry. Okay, in at number seven, we have Agatha Christie and basically any of her books, but uh, I've picked out Death on the Nile as my favorite one. And uh, the reason for that is basically it just, it's, I think it's my mum's favorite one and my uncle's favorite one as well. Linnet Ridgeway. That's her, said Mr. Burnaby, the landlord of the Three Crowns. He nudged his companion. The two men stared with round bucolic eyes and slightly open mouths. A big scarlet Rolls Royce had just stopped in front of the local post office. 
A girl jumped out, a girl without a hat and wearing a frock that looked, but only looked, simple. A girl with golden hair and straight autocratic features. A girl with a lovely shape. A girl such as was seldom seen in Molten Underwood. With a quick imperative step she passed into the post office. There we go. So for number six we have Graham Greene, Our Man in Nirvana. He's one of my favourite authors and this is probably my favourite book by him. So it was the, the logical choice. It's got an introduction by Christopher Hitchens. Okay, part one. Oh great, I would do this to myself, wouldn't I? That N-word going down the street, said Dr. Hasselbacker, standing in the Wonder Bar. He reminds me of you, Mr. Wormold. It was typical of Dr. Hasselbacker that after 15 years of friendship, he still used the prefix Mr. Friendship proceeded with the slowness and assurance of a careful diagnosis. On Wormold's deathbed, when Dr. Hasselbacker came to feel his failing pulse, he would perhaps become Jim. At number five, we have Ham on Rye by Charles Bukowski. So this is about kind of his childhood and I think written through his alter ego, uh, Henry Chinaski as well. So I'll read you the start of this. The first thing I remember is being under something. It was a table. I saw a table leg. I saw the legs of the people and a portion of the tablecloth hanging there. It was dark under there. I liked being under there. It must have been in Germany. I must have been between one and two years old. It was 1922. I felt good under the table. Nobody seemed to know that I was there. There was sunlight upon the rug and on the legs of the people. I liked the sunlight. The legs of the people were not interesting, not like the tablecloth which hung down, not like the table leg, not like the sunlight. So there we go. Encourage you to check out some Bukowski if you haven't read any already. So number four, we have The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. So she's not necessarily one of my most read authors, but this was my top book of 2018. Spoiler alert. So um, I thought I'd pick this one out. We slept in what had once been the gymnasium. The floor was of varnished wood, with stripes and circles painted on it, for the games that were formerly played there. The hoops for the basketball nets were still in place, though the nets were gone. A balcony ran around the room for the spectators, and I thought I could smell faintly like an afterimage, the pungent scent of sweat shot through with a sweet taint of chewing gum and perfume from the watching girls, felt skirted as I knew from pictures, later in miniskirts, then pants, then in one earring, spiky green streaked hair. Dances would have been held there. The music lingered, a palimpsest of unheard sound, style upon style, an undercurrent of drums, a forlorn wail, garlands made of tissue paper flowers, cardboard devils, a revolving ball of mirrors, powdering the dances with a snow of light. I'm due a reread of this already. <laughs> okay, number three, we have The Stand by Stephen King, because it's probably my favorite Stephen King book, and he's again one of my most read authors. Da da da. Du, 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 du. Sally, a mutter. Wake up now, Sally. A louder mutter. Leave me alone. He shook her harder. Wake up. You got to wake up. Charlie, Charlie's voice, calling her. For how long? Sally swam up out of sleep. First she glanced at the clock on the night table and saw it was quarter past two in the morning. Charlie shouldn't even be here. He should be on shift. Then she got her first good look at him and something leapt up inside her, some deadly intuition. Her husband was deathly pale. His eyes, sta his eyes started and bulged from their sockets. The car keys were in one hand. He was still using the other to shake her, although her eyes were open. It was as if he hadn't been able to register the fact that she was awake. Okay, in at number two and representing the Discworld series as a whole, this is also, I think, the first Discworld book that I read. It's Feet of Clay by Terry Pratchett, which is one of the City Watch books. And it's got golems in it. It was a warm spring night when a fist knocked at the door so hard that the hinges bent. A man opened it and peered out into the street. There was mist coming off the river and it was a cloudy night. He might as well have tried to see through white velvet. But he thought afterwards that there had been shapes out there, just beyond the light spilling out into the road. A lot of shapes, watching him carefully. He thought maybe they'd been very faint points of light. There was no mistaking the shape right in front of him though. It was big and dark red and looked like a child's clay model of a man. Its eyes were two embers. Well, what do you want at this time of night? The golem handed him a slate on which was written, We hear you want a golem. And finally, number one, no surprise to anyone, it's Northern Lights by Philip Pullman, also known as the Golden Compass in America, I believe. And uh, yeah, favorite book of all time. 
and favourite series of all time. So yeah. Chapter one, the decanter of Tokai, Tokai, Takei, Takeshi's castle. Lyra and her demon move through the darkening hall, taking care to keep to one side, out of sight of the kitchen. The three great tables that ran the length of the hall were laid already, the silver and the glass catching what little light there was, and the long benches were pulled out ready for the guests. Portraits of former masters hung high up in the gloom along the walls. Lyra reached the dais and looked back at the open kitchen door and, seeing no one, stepped up beside the high table. The places here were laid with gold, not silver, and the fourteen seats were not oak benches but mahogany chairs with velvet cushions. Lyra stopped beside the master's chair and flicked the biggest glass gently with a fingernail. The sound rang clearly through the hall. You're not taking this seriously, whispered her demon. Behave yourself. There we go. Recommend it. Yes. Go and read. Okay, so that's what I came up with for these two tags in one. I thought it was a good way to, uh, you know, wedge them together. I guess I'll also tag some people, although I think most people have already done this. But what the hey, I'll also tag, I don't know, Missy from Binge Reader, Todd the Librarian, Graham Quigley. Oh, he tagged me, so actually, maybe not. And Kit Cats can read. And Minx Laura 123. Alright, that'll do. So anyway, on that note, thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. I'm losing my voice. <laughs>